were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. Mr. Chairman. Before we start with the video, I know that many of you will comment and ask why Warthog Defense is making a video that deals with UFOs and the possibility of extraterrestrial life. The answer is simple. This is a matter of national security. David Grush is a United States Air Force officer and former intelligence official, and his hearing at Congress is a one-in-a-lifetime event. So let's see the most interesting parts of his testimony. Intelligence Agency, NGA. Officer David Grush declares under oath for the first time that the U.S. government is in possession of UFOs and non-human bodies. Intelligent extraterrestrials. Something I can't discuss in public setting. Um, okay, I can't ask when you think this occurred. <laughs> um, if you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos, eyewitness, like how would that be determined? The specific documentation I would have to talk to you in a skiff about. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay, so, and, and you may or may not be able to answer my last question and maybe we get into a skiff at the next hearing that we have, but who in the government either, what agency, sub-agency, what contractors, who should be called into the next hearing about UAPs, either in a public setting or even in a private setting? And, and you probably can't name names, but what agencies or organizations, contractors, et cetera, do we need to call in to get these questions answered, whether it's about funding, what programs are happening, and what's out there? I can give you a specific cooperative and hostile witness list of specific individuals uh, that were in those. And, and how soon can we get that list? I'm happy to provide that to you after the hearing. Super, thank you, and I yield back. Questions specifically about UFOs and whether or not any man-made object could move in the ways in which these unidentified objects have been seen moving. All three of the witnesses, including former Navy pilot Ryan Graves and U.S. Navy Commander David Fravor, say it's impossible. They move essentially um, ways in which current technology or aircraft that we know of are unable to actually function or move. And so will you just, for the public record, again, once, once again, um, just uh, briefly, uh, dis either describe or note that aircraft that are being witnessed, particularly by the 30 folks that you're working with, are essentially outside the scope of anything that we know of today and the technology we have today. Mr. Graves, Mr. Fravor? Yes, uh, the objects that are being seen by commercial pilots are uh, performing maneuvers that are unexplainable due to our current understanding of our technology and our capabilities as a country. And that applies for the military as well. Mr. 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 Fravor? Yeah, I concur with that. We have nothing that can stop in midair and go the other direction, nor do we have anything that can, like in our situation, come down from space, hang out for three hours, and go back up. Thank you. My last question, and, so, and sometimes you, I know that some, you have also said some of these answers in the past, but we're trying to get them on the public record as well, which is really important. Mr. Gresh, finally, do you believe that our government is in possession of UAPs? Uh, absolutely, based on interviewing uh, over 40 witnesses over four years. And, and, and where? I know the exact locations. That David Grush tells Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez that he will provide her with specific names and locations of unacknowledged UFO special access programs in a classified setting. For the record, if you were me, where would you look? Titles, programs, departments, regions, if you could just name anything. Um, and I put that as an open question to the three of you. I'd be happy to give you that in a closed environment. I can tell you specifically. Thank you. Um, Commander Fravor? And I would say, and I've told people that you, you have to know where to look. They're not gonna divulge it to you because of the classification levels. But if you know where to look and who to talk to, which is exactly what Mr. Grush can point you, then you, then you have them. Okay, Mr. Graves? I was an operator, so I was depending on folks like Mr. Grush to do that homework. Okay, thank you very much. I yield back to the chair. David Grush tells Representative Burchett, the U.S. government has known about non-human intelligence in relation to UFOs since the 1930s. 
Grush says he provided the names and locations of UFO crash retrieval programs to the intelligence committees and to the intelligence community inspectors general. Has the U.S. government become aware of actual evidence of extraterrestrial or otherwise unexplained forms of intelligence? And if so, when do you think this first occurred? Uh, I like to use the term non-human. I don't like to denote origin. Keeps the aperture open, both scientifically. Right. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, like I've dis discussed publicly uh, previously, 1930s. Okay. Can you give me the names and titles of the people with direct first-hand knowledge uh, and access to some of this crash retrieval, some of these crash retrieval programs, and maybe which facilities, military bases that would the recovered material would be in? And I know a lot of Congress have talked about we're going to go to Area 51, and you know, and there's nothing there anymore anyway. It's just you know, and we move like a glacier. And as soon as we announce it, I'm sure the moving vans would pull up. But please. Uh, I can't discuss that publicly, but I did provide that information both to the intel committees and the inspector general. And we could get that in the SCIF if we were allowed to get in a SCIF with you. Would that be probably what you would think? Sure, if you had the appropriate yeah. accesses, yeah. Uh, what special access programs cover this information, and how is it possible that they have evaded oversight for so long? Uh, I do know the names. Once again, I can't discuss that publicly and, and how they've evaded oversight. I. In a close setting, I could tell you the specific tradecraft used. All right. When do, when do you think those programs began and who authorized them? I do know a lot of that information, but that's something I can't discuss publicly because it's sensitive. All right. Things. If any of y'all want to jump in on any of this, you're more than welcome to. Um, what level of security clearance is required to fully access these programs? Well, anybody who has... Uh, and, I, and I say that oh. because myself... Um, Representative Gates and Representative Luna were basically turned away at one point at Eglin. So please go right ahead. Uh, certainly, difference between member access and say somebody like me, but anybody who has a you know TSSCI clearance and meets the eligibility criteria, the access adjudicative authority should be able to grant you access. So, yeah. uh, Ms. Birch, if you'll yield, so just to be put a fine point on that, there's nothing that you're aware of that's above special access program classification. It's a misnomer that there's anything actually above top secret. Executive Order 13526 delineates the classification levels. Right. And, but I, I draw a point on that because we can have access to, mm -hmm. to those programs. And so the notion that we're not being given that access sort of defies our typical muscle memory here in Congress. Thank you, Mr. Burchett. I'll yield back to you. Thank you, Mr. Gates. Um, along those lines, Title 10, you may not know this or not, but uh, Title 10 and Title 50 authorization as they, they seem to say they're inefficient. It, so who gets to decide this, in your opinion, in the past? Uh, it's a group of career uh, senior executive officials. Okay, are they government officials? Both or in and out. Do what? Both in and out of government, and that's about as far I as I got you. go there. Yeah. All right, well, that's, that leads to my next question. Which private corporations are directly involved in this program? How much taxpayer money has been invested in these programs, to your knowledge? I mean, we know we, know we, we audit the Pentagon every year, mm -hmm. and I've been here five years, and they failed the dadgum thing every year. They uh, lose over a billion dollars a year, we think, and I've told the Department of Defense maybe 60% of their assets are unaccounted for, whatever the heck that means. In the public sector, you go to jail for that kind of crap. So tell me. Yeah, I know when I, um, I'm, I'm a dollar off of my DTS travel voucher, I get hammered, but it uh, seems like it doesn't work the other if way, you right? Sell over yeah. six, if you sell over $600 worth of stuff on eBay, now you get a call from the IRS. So, mm -hmm. please, what corporations? Yeah, I don't know the specific metrics towards the end of your question. Uh, the specific corporations I did provide uh, to the committees in specific divisions. and uh, I spent 11 and a half hours with both intel committees. So. Okay, has there been any... Has there been an active U.S. government disinformation campaign to deny the existence of unidentified aerial phenomena, and if so, why? I can't go beyond what I've already espoused publicly about that. Okay, I've been told to ask you what that what that is and how to get it in the record. Which, which, uh, what have you stated publicly in your interviews for the congressional record? Uh, 
if you uh, reference my News Nation interview and I talk about a multi-decade you know, campaign to um, disenfranchise public interest, yeah. basically. Yeah. Thank I you. apologize, Mr. Chairman. I yield back negative 21. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members-only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.